Thank you, thank you, Zoltan. So my presentation will be focused on the multimorbidity field, and exactly I'm going to present what we have done in the multimorbidity field in the CRODIS and CRODIS Plus project, why we are doing it, and how we are doing it. So, but before I start, just a quick overview for those of you uh, that are not familiar with the term multimorbidity. What is multimorbidity? Multimorbidity is the co-occurrence of two or more chronic diseases. It's the most common feature or characteristic of older adults. Two out of two-thirds of the older population has multimorbidity. Somebody, somebody has defined it as the most common chronic condition. It has an impact on outcomes and healthcare costs. And most important, it really challenges our healthcare systems that are organized on the traditional single disease approach that is clearly inadequate for people that have two, three, four, five, or even more diseases. Just to give you an idea of what multimorbidity is, it's, it's a wave of better tsunami that, is, that affects uh, particularly older people the older we get, the higher the probability of getting more diseases, um, uh, more diseases is. So that's the reason why we think this is a priority in, um, uh, in for uh, healthcare systems of Western, Western countries. So let's go through what we have done in CRODIS and CRODIS Plus. Uh, how do, um, how do, did we approach the issue of multimorbidity? Well, for those of you that participated in the CRODIS project, in the first CRODIS project, you may remember what we have developed. We have developed in this project uh, a, an integrated care model, a model to take care of people with multimorbidity that includes different aspects and different components, 16 aspects, 16 areas that we believe to be particularly important for the care of people with multimorbidity. It includes delivery system design, such as comprehensive assessment, coordinated team, individual care plans, and case manager. Decision support, self-management, clinical information, and community resources. So we, together with the help of experts, identify 16 areas that we believe to be important for the care of multimorbidity. We describe them, but the, at the very end of the first CRODIS project, what, did we, what we underlined was that the model derived from expert opinion. It's only um, paper, it's only on paper. What we really needed, that what we really underlined was important, was to implement the opportunity to test it in pilot, in pilot action. And this is what we are doing in the CRODIS Plus project in, this, in these days. Why are we doing it? Well, I already explained that multimorbidity is extremely common and it's extremely important. But when we looked at how European countries addressed the issue of multimorbidity, we saw that the picture was extremely, extremely heterogeneous. Different programs targeting different factors in different ways, not measuring how well they are doing or how bad they are doing. So it seems to us, and these again are results of the first CRODIS project, that the picture in European countries is very, very heterogeneous. And it's hard to say who is doing well and who is not doing, uh, who is not doing well. In addition, we thought that finding a strategy, a common strategy or methodology to approach the issue of multimorbidity may bring possible advantages for policymakers that can providing them evidence on effective interventions that, are, that can inform policy stakeholders, and also patients that are the real actors of, the, uh, of, the, of our healthcare systems. So we think that we had a strong reason to bring on this, this, this approach and this, this concept. And now really what we are doing in the CRODIS Plus project. We brought on what has been done in the first CRODIS project, and we are implementing that theoretical model that we have developed that is no longer only on paper, but is something that is becoming more and more uh, real. And how are we doing it? Several steps. First of all, the concept of risk stratification and the importance of understanding the target of our interventions. This is, I feel, this is extremely, extremely important because as the WHO has underlined, the consequence of multimorbidity cannot be arithmetically determined based on the number of clinical condition the person presents. It means that we may have two, three, four, five, ten diseases, but the clinical 
the, the clinical aspect or the functional aspect of that person is really may may vary may vary really vary a lot. So there are different uh, various other factors that are important, not only the disease patterns but also socioeconomical status, function, and mental health problems that should be considered in the in the picture and should be considered to identify peer persons that really have high, high care needs. Second of it, identifying the scope of our intervention. What our practices are doing, we should clearly identify where we are going and what we want to do and the situation we are facing. Uh, Europe is a very, very heterogeneous country. We cannot say it's a country, it's a continent. I, I don't know exactly. I would say it's a country probably. But, and the situation, even within individual countries in Europe are extremely heterogeneous and different. So the first step might really be to analyze the situation, to analyze the context where we want to bring on our intervention, where we want to implement, because really interventions and solutions cannot be fixed. We don't have the magic pill, okay? But an intervention cannot be fixed and standardized, but should be adapted to the, to the, to the context. And after that, clearly, we propose to develop pilot actions, uh, pilot actions plan and to implement these plans. And then the last step is the outcome assessment. Assess how well we are doing or how bad is it worth to bring on these interventions or not. So these are the steps we are following in the implementation of the multimorbidity care model. Just to give you, uh, these are the five implementing sites that are participating in Work Package 6. We have two implementing sites from Spain, Andalusia, and Aragon. One from um, one from Italy in Rome, and two from two from Lithuania. They span. They cover different kind of settings: primary care, hospital, or both of them, and also cover. Uh, they are either re regional or local uh, uh, local implementations. And last, they implement different aspects of the multimorbidity care model. So some of them are focused on individual care plans. Some other on other factors that are underlying that underline the model. So as just as a quick example, I want to show you what we are doing in Rome. So Based on the SWOT analysis and the context analysis, we identify several areas that should be improved in our care, that should be improved in the practice where we are working, and these are poor coordination of care, accessibility of care, fragmentation, and improvement, need on improvement in self-management. And then based on what we have seen, we propose a change. We propose an action plan that we put in place to change the situation by uh, the use of case manager, by the use of technologies that is extremely important in the field of multimorbidity, comprehensive geriatric assessment, and, and patience empowerment. So for each of these, we develop a plan. We develop a plan that is now, putting, that is now in place in, this, in these days. So as, just as an example, this is what we have done in the, for, the, for the poor coordination of care, identification of the problem, goal of the intervention, how to perform the intervention by the use of a case manager and, in, and implementation. What is missing here is the outcome. That is something we are going to measure in, in 2020 at the end of the, of the implementation. And clearly, in Rome, in our site, we are implementing different aspects or different components of the multimorbidity care model. One or more of them is not important. The important is focusing on what is relevant for that specific, for that specific practice. Um, we also, thanks, with, uh, thanks to Mirka to her help, we were also able to identify barriers. Because really, a key part of our work is identifying what, which are the factors that really prevents us, that sh we should overcome uh, to, to bring on the implementation. And I believe this is also a very important result. Because if we know the barriers, we may think on how, which interventions we can put in place to overcome these, these barriers. And I'm closing here with the posters. Please go and visit the posters that are describing what we are doing in the five practices in Work Package 5. They are not in this room, they are outside in front of the buffet, uh, the bu buffet so you can take something to eat and watch to, uh, to, to what we are doing and to various nice posters we have presented. Thank you very much for your attention.